Morning! We're on the River Earn again. It's the only place that's not frozen. Roll that intro. Kettle is on, get a cup of coffee on the go. I'm fishing four rods. You've seen me fish here before. You've seen me blank here a lot before. <laughs> but I went to three different locations. Uh, two of them, you couldn't even get down the road to the lock, so I wasn't even going to try it. It's quite a steep hill and it looks kind of, you know, very snowed over and very slick, put it that way. Maybe if I had the Land Rover it wouldn't have been a problem, but driving a van is a problem. The other location was a big, was a bay. And it was froze over. So, location number one is frozen. This is a nice little bay. You have the main lock just over there where the horizon is, where the uh, sun's coming up. And it takes you out into the main part of lower lock iron, but this is still frozen. So there won't be any fishing on this part. Let's find somewhere else to go. So I'm on the river. I have a heron again. Yep, I have a heron. It's kind of jumping around and landing beside the rods and... I swear if it touches any of the rods today I'm going to boot its arsehole. Fishing opposite the police station in Inniskillen town. Four rods spread. I have a herring. A smelt, a pollen, and a bluey out. Just waiting for the kettle to boil now. It's nippy. Still, still negative one coming down. Coming down the road, the lowest I seen it on the the car this morning was negative three, but I think it's about negative one or zero at the minute. The ground is rock hard, I had to uh, use the T-bar to drive in the, the bank sticks. Once you drive through like the first maybe six inches, the uh, the ground's fairly soft again, but it's just getting it through that first six inches. Here comes dipshit the herd again. And it's just flown into my rod. Stupid fucking animal. Flew into the line. Can't seem to escape the damn things. There's one here and there's one up by the, the rod. It's just up to the uh, right off screen here. I have four rods out. Just, this, is the, this isn't the one that flew into the line, this is his mate, this is the smaller of the two of them. The bigger one kind of pops in and pops out again. He's now sitting across the river at the police jetty. But I have this cheeky bugger. sitting there making a pest of itself. Oi! Don't eat my fucking
fucker on hook and treadle, you dickhead. Yes, you. Lock Iron, River Iron Wildlife. I don't know what's wrong with the herons on this river. They all seem to be cheeky as hell. Other cup of coffee time though. Cooking with scopes today is going to be something nice and simple. Making a bacon sandwich. But we're also going to spice it up a little by putting some chorizo in it. It's only the mild one. Normally I get the spicy one, but I couldn't find the spicy one in the shop, so mild chorizo. Just add a bit of a, a bit of a bit of spice to the, the sandwiches. And if that isn't enough spice, we're going to put some uh, sauce in it. I quite like this sauce. Uh, it's actually quite quite nice for a jar hot sauce. Normally you don't get that good at hot sauces. I did get some nice uh, spicy barbecue stuff ages ago that was a nice really really tangy it was actually very tasty you could have drank the fucking stuff but it did have that uh, that kick it was made with uh, scotch bonnet chilies so it had a nice sweet you could taste the honey you could taste the brown sugar you know you could taste like the basic barbecue sauce flavors but you just had that nice warm they kind of come to a peak where you weren't kind of gasping for air, but you got this nice heat. It didn't come up behind you and beat you over the head. It was just a nice, nice heat, nice hot barbecue sauce. But at the minute, I'm trying to defrost my uh, cooking oil because it is uh, more like jelly, which is no good. At least it's able to be moved now, so I'm just going to put it back in here and. Try and defrost it for a bit. Haven't had any runs yet. But it's still early, so let's we'll see how things go. Top tip when you're doing your bacon sandwich and you're gonna put a little bit of chorizo in it. I tend to fry my chorizo separately. Do this first. That way the whole pan gets a nice it gets the oil out of the chorizo. Chorizo is, it's not healthy, you know, it's very, very uh, oily, oily, papri smells of paprika, it's, it's really nice though, but it's just, uh, once in a while is a treat, okay, every day, not okay, but chorizo, you don't have to cook it for ages, just literally kind of two minutes, because it's thinly sliced, the fat dissolves out of it and all you're left with is that nice pork with the paprika and the, the, the different savoury, different, not savoury, the different uh, flavourings that it's cured in. Because it's thinly sliced you don't want to cook it too long otherwise you're liable to have very 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 crispy slices of paprika. You want them to be about that sort of consistency so you can kind of see through the fat. As you can see the fat that's coming off that is i just get a bit over here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's coming off orange. That's the paprika that's in your uh, chorizo. Hickory spoked, thick cut bacon. Breakfast of champions. I'm going to eat this, make a cup of coffee, and then I'm going to do some, wop, some uh, wobbling dead bit. I'll discuss how I do, how I make a I uh, fish with the sink and draw or wobble dead bit. It's quite easy. It's basically you're hooking on a fish with the head up the trace, you're putting it out, you're letting it sink and you're just jigging it across the bottom or you're, you know, retrieving it in such a way that it kind of looks like it's wounded trying to imitate a live fish. But there's some tricks that you can do to make the bait go a bit further, sink it a bit faster, you know, little bits and pieces. So I'll show you that. I'm going to eat my breakfast first. I'll show you all that. Yes, yes, I know why I spoil you. 20 minutes later. Let's talk how to fish sink and draw or wobble a dead bit. 
First of all, you need a dead bit. Here we have a dead bit. Here we have it mounted so it's head up the trace. Now say you're fishing somewhere that's uh, you know, not very deep, you just want the fish it's sort of shallow, then this is fine. All you're doing is casting this out and slowly retrieving it through the water. That's all you're doing. You can put a curve in the bit so it kind of swivels around a bit, but in the simplest terms, sink and draw is exactly as it sounds. You cast this out, you let it sink, and then you draw it back in. Now, because we're fishing in a river and it's 19 to 20 feet deep in the middle, we're wanting to get a bit of weight to get out there a bit further. So, we can use, where did I put it? I had it around here a second ago. Ah, right. We can use one of these. This is just a, a normal steel bar with a little eye in it that I have a little clip attached to. Now all we do with this is feed this down into its belly so it's in the belly and then we just clip this to the trace. But this little link's a bit too long so we're going to make one that's a bit shorter about half the length because we don't really need it that long so we're just going to clip it down a bit. But we're going to put this inside this and we're going to do some sink and draw fishing. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Obviously I'm not going to show you how to put this into a fish's mouth because you know, I, I, I would hope I don't need to show you how to do that. So, here we have it, all clipped in, hooks attached, and ready to wobble. Let's give it a go. All I'm going to do is clip the trace to the to a normal swivel. So swivel, ball bearing swivel and trace. This year. Jeez, that's good spice. Red bit, mate. Ah, it's kind of. Red? No, no, it's a mono. I'll let you get on anyway, sir. Oh, Good to chat to you. I wasn't paying attention there, I must have had a oh, you end up in the line. Oh. 
Let's try it again, shall we? All you're doing is casting it out, and you let it sink down, and then just jigging it back and just jigging it back in. You can have little pulses like that in the rod tip, or you could just wind it in nice and slowly, like you're lure fishing. Normally I would use braided line for this, but I haven't got braided line on this reel. I'm going to let this one sink right to the bottom and then bring it across really, really slow. When you get a bite doing this, you'll feel like a tug. And it's important just to kind of stop, let the fish get hold of it and then give it a strike. You'll feel the thud when the pike grabs it. See, because I'm fishing beside it's like a jetty with boats, the boats will have uh, cover, so don't be scared to cast towards the boats.
that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you sink and draw. Now I'm going to go up here a wee bit and chuck out this some more and see if I can catch anything. Uh, if I can, I'll let you know. If I can't, hey ho! Wobbling dead bit or sink and draw, no matter what you call it, wasn't really successful. So I'm back here now. I just chucked that rod out again to a static dead bit. Give it a good 50 minutes, maybe an hour, chucking the chucking the bit about, but nothing. Nothing so far on either of the rods either. Either of the rods either. What time is it? It's coming up on five to four. Uh, Friday the 8th of January. We're going into lockdown again. Yay! Although, according to the Ulster Angling Federation in Northern Ireland, fishing is permitted, which is good. I think in England the same sort of scenario was happening with you guys in England. The Angling Trust managed to sort out so the English guys could get fishing as well. The whole thing's kind of getting very old at the minute and very boring. Don't get me wrong, I obey the rules, I obeyed the rules. I said wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, so I do that. Wear a mask if you go into the shop, I do that. All my local shops, like local clothes shops, all closed down. Because it's too dangerous, you might get the... Uh, unknown pandemic cough from unspecified area in the world apparently YouTube algorithm is now picking up automatically any mention of the uh, the unnamed cough from unspecified origin and a good friend of mine who again does a shoot does a fishing he does fishing does shooting does you know especially it's an outdoors channel well his channel got a a community strike which is like if you get three of them in a certain length of time your channel just gets deleted straight away so and when he asked about this community strike thing he was told it was because he was wrong thinking so it can't be wrong thinking Wrong thinking is terrible. We all have to do what our Silicon Valley big tech overlords have to do, have to tell us to do. Can't think for ourselves. So, lockdowns. No shopping locally in local little tiny small owned family business shops because you could get sick. But it's okay to go to a multi-million pound cooperation like Tesco's and cram hundreds of people in there perfectly fine no chance of getting sick there I can't have any more than you know any people that's not in my bubble over at my house for you know a drink of whiskey and play poker or something smoke cigars but elite elite athletes 
can jet off to Dubai for pints beside the pool with the tourists. Like Celtic did this week, last week. Kids can still go to school, of course. You, know, you have to send your kids to school. And no way do kids going to school and meeting with other kids from other households possibly uh, track back every cold and flu that's going in the country. And no way at all that happens. But the thing that's boiling my absolute, absolutely boiling my piss is that the United Kingdom is still allowing countries that has a higher rate of infection to fly into the UK. You still board a plane from China and fly into the UK? But I can't drive across to Scotland on the ferry to visit my granddad because reasons not in the bubble get a bit tired of it to be honest with you guys I do not trust our media at all point blank refuse to trust the media and I don't trust our politicians you know, the one thing that this uh, unnamed pandemic from unspecified origin has highlighted, and it should highlight it to everybody, is that there aren't, there ain't half some clowns in, poli in Parliament, is there? Or elected assemblies, or whatever you want to call it. You know, everyone knows Northern Irish politics is a basket case. It's a tribal mess. Everyone knows that. Scotland's doing its best to get there, you know, with the SNP. But, you know, if Boris Johnson said, uh, t said that we have to all go outside to our back garden in our underpants and jump three times in the air, then that will cure COVID. Then Sturgeon in Scotland would say, we have to go out to our front garden and clap in our underpants wearing one sock just to be different just to make her cure more Scottishy and here in Northern Ireland one half of the community would say okay we're all going out to our back garden in our underpants to jump up and down but we want to have God Save the Queen being played in the background and the other half of the community is going to come out and say those nasty bad Brits are making us uh, forcing us to jump up and down we must resist this. <laughs> oh. We still have the uh, the media talking heads. We had, for a while there, we had people like uh, Stephen Nolan. They're from my English viewers, Scottish viewers. Pretty much anyone that's not Northern Irish. Stephen Nolan is a is a BBC radio and TV employee from Northern Ireland. I would cross the street to, to get away from him. For a while there, he was chasing people in and out of petrol stations around the country, sticking a microphone in their face and saying, You are a disgusting human being for not wearing a mask. Are you trying to murder your granny? And all that shit. Much the same way as other detestable low lives like Piers Morgan did and uh, uh, the Sky Kate Burley woman. And in fact, I find it hilarious that the three names I've brought up, you know, there's been photographs that I've hit social media of, of the three names you know, breaking the COVID restrictions, not socially distancing, and generally up to shitty shit. I also find it interesting that when anyone else calls these talking heads out on their utter hypocrisy, the response isn't, I hold my hands up, go, you've got me, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Their, ha their natural reaction is, how dare you attack me? How dare you uh, 
invade my privacy. That's their reaction. So much so that Kate Burley in the Sky News, other lady that was caught, they're actually like trying to find out who grassed them up so they could be sacked. <laughs> but anyway, fishing is still allowed. So I'll continue to fish. I just did the fish to play ball. Because they're not playing ball today. I can feel the temperature really beginning to drop. The sun's just up and down behind me, so it's going to get chilly soon. Now I'm not I'm not saying to anyone, you know, don't wear masks. You know, the rules are out there that you have to wear a mask, so just wear the damn mask. Apparently the vaccination schedule is until the what's what what was the way they put it? Herd immunity won't be reached in the United Kingdom on the current vaccination schedule until the middle of 2022. So we'll be having a few more lockdowns, I think. Which is a bit crap, really, if I'm honest. I know that with the lockdowns, you know, and being allowed to fish, this might be good. But it's not so good when uh, you're still furloughed off your job. That's not so good. It's hard to make ends meet when you're only getting 80% of your pay. So the sooner the country gets back to normal, the better. Believe it or not, we moved into the, the wife and I moved into the new house in the middle of July 2020. Still haven't had a house showing party. Our closest friends haven't seen the inside of the house. They know we've moved. You know, but the majority of my friends, you know, they're all itching to have a house room party. We're all itching to have a party. But we're not. You know, house room party has been put off indefinitely until this pandemic is over. Which is a bit crap, because there's nothing more I enjoy doing than throwing a party. For my friends, of course. Most of the time I'm antisocial. I mean, I go fishing to get away from people. So when I go fishing, I'm getting away from humans. But my social circle I would quite happily invite to my house. Obviously when this uh, unnamed virus from unspecified origin buggers off. Still, as much of a fruitcake politics that we have in the United Kingdom, as much as that is it's nothing compared to what's going on in the States at the minute. Woohoo! It's all kicking off there. It makes me chuckle, you know. If anyone out there honestly believes that the the Joe Biden fella got more votes in from the from the black folks than Barack Obama did, something's wrong. Or that areas of America that, you know, have had plus 100% of the vote, something's wrong. Or that there's been area documents where dead people have voted, again, something's wrong. And they all seem to go the one direction. So you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be Einstein to figure out that 
there was shenanigans. So it's all kicking off. Oh well. Could be worse. We could be living in France. Seen my friend is actually living in northern France. I used to be in the Air Force with him. Good guy. Him and his wife. They bought land in uh, Normandy. They own a bed and breakfast and you know they converted an old farmhouse and it's a nice place. He was sending me pictures of his latest trip to Paris. And wow. It's bad. It's bad. Funny you don't see any of it in the media though. Apparently, apparently France has had uh, protesters pretty constant now for nearly two years. Yellow jacket protesters. Never see anything about it in the media. Wonder why that is. Anyone would think that the media is not all about telling us the truth anymore. Or reporting the news. It's about pushing an agenda. Fuck, I'm sounding like a conspiracy theorist. Sounding like a like that uh, that crazy guy that was an American crazy guy. What do you call him? Alex Jones. <laughs> the frogs are gay. <laughs> anyway, because this is going right on YouTube, I have to play by YouTube's rules. Much like. Facebooks and Twitters and you know any of the Silicon Valley you know big tech platforms you either obey the rules or you get kicked off their uh, platform so I have to obey the rules because wrong think is wrong <laughs> oh The rivers actually fell quite a lot since the last time I was on the river at the start of the week here. You know, I can actually see the uh, the bottom of the, the the bottom of the grass. It will drop about three feet, and there'll be rocks. I can actually see the rocks today. You know, the last couple of times I was down here, the water was level with the grass, so it's fell three feet. You know, there must just be constant. The, the gates at the bottom of Petora must just be opened constantly to let the water out. The urn system is a bit of a strange one, if you don't know. You have the upper, the red, the river, and then the lower. Again, if you look on a map, you know the lower is the big one. Then you have the river. You have actually two river urns. You know, in Northern Ireland, you have two river urns. In the south, you have another river urn. But you have the main river urn that comes through in a scale and town itself. Then you have the second one that goes through Balik. But the river's uh, not tanking through as heavily as I thought it was. I'm casting six ounce I'm casting five ounce and six ounce leads, and the five ounce is holding the bottom. I'll probably get away with four ounce if I'm honest. The only reason I'm chucking the five and the six ounce leads is because that's what was in the bag. So yeah, it's not so bad. Don't think I'll stay out long though. You know, you can actually feel the temperature falling down now at the minute. So, I'll fish here till it's a little bit dark, then I'll probably drive home. But if you don't see me in any more video, then thanks for watching please leave a a thumbs up or a thumbs down why did i hold a thumb up for a thumbs down it's too cold leave me alone 
leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, then do us a favour and subscribe, because that helps me out. Check it on the statistics and the analytics of the channel. Over 50% of the folk that watch the videos don't subscribe to them. Don't subscribe to my channel. So that's a bit of a bummer. I had a kind of hope for higher. Higher numbers. So if you haven't yet subscribed, do me a favour and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you a penny. And if you want notified that I've got videos coming out, then you have to click the bell icon. But if you just want to kind of subscribe to me and not get any notification, that's cool too. I don't mind. I want to say thank you to everyone that's doing the whole liking, subscribing, sharing and commenting. It's awesome. But until the next time, troops, tight lines.